So if you're new to the Trident and you're about to get one, if you can put it somewhere that's easy to access so you can pull this drawer out, do it. Because this is a pain in the butt the way I do it. But it's pretty simple. I'll throw up the phone app, kind of runs you through the instructions. I'll try to do it quickly and efficiently. The biggest thing is, you know, this design, I know this thing is always like popping out. I don't know if it's mine was faulty or what, but like it has a weird design. So I usually just take that out because otherwise it's gonna get in the way. And you just want to be really careful not to pinch these tubes. They go back to the side and if you pinch that off, you're gonna run into an issue. So when you pull it out, be gentle, make sure you're not gonna dislodge anything. And then um, remember two on the right, one on the left, and we're gonna push them back in. So do this as quickly as possible. You can see if I let go, this will fall now. So again, if you have a way to have something here to support it, you'll be happy you did because doing it this way is just stupid. Luckily, you only have to do it every few months, so not that big of a deal. You can see I got leaking fluid. Hopefully that doesn't uh, throw things off. I think it'll be all right, but we'll see what's up. You're gonna do this uh, middle one here, Trident Reagent Replacement. Replace Trident Reagents, not the A1, the one below it, because you're gonna do all of them. For my case, all three are out. Alright. So it's telling you to unscrew each one first, and then replace it. When you're unscrewing, I try to keep my finger here and then unscrew here. Because if you just start unscrewing and wants to flip it, you let go and it comes back. So you actually have to make sure you're unscrewing it. Be really careful with this guy. You don't want to bend it. You don't want to clog it. You don't want it, you know, hitting salt creep. Try to make sure it doesn't touch anything. Here's our A reagent. And, you know, as it says, dispose of it properly. I still have a ton in there, I got about a quarter. So who knows why we're replacing it. Maybe it goes bad after a certain amount of time, but it seems a bit wasteful to me, but you know, it's a new product. They're like the only one that does it, so I'm not gonna complain. And I do love this thing. Got the lot ID on the bottom there, which is nice. The two A's should match. Word of advice, go slow. You can tell these tubes are so tiny. You don't want to pull one off or damage it. Like, I wouldn't rush this. It's a delicate piece of equipment. Now my B and my C are actually pretty close to empty. So, not too wasteful there but there's still definitely fluid left. All right, so a big thing is you wanna make sure you shake it because you want that reagent to get mixed up. It's probably been sitting for quite a while. And if the solution is going to settle, you wanna make sure you mix it back up. So I'm just gonna go ahead and shake all three to give it some time to settle out after I shake it. A reagency that's empty, I'm going to take the cap off of that one and put it on the next one for disposal. Sometimes it's easier to kind of come in at an angle to make sure I don't bend anything. No need to over tighten this, just make sure you screw it all the way down and it's hand tight. It's too pee. Wow. 
whatever, it looks like a little leaked out. Got on my hands, probably good to wear gloves, but that was the one that was leaking, so it was just on the thing. Who knows if this stuff's bad for you, but I'm sure I'll live. I think this is an important part, just making sure when you put this back in that these tubes don't get squished or kinked. So just, you know, slowly work it back and now just watch it to make sure that they're not going to get kinked. Like this A1 here, doesn't have a lot of room to go. I find I push the drawer all the way in and I put this guy back. I'm gonna just uh, empty this guy. When you first set up the Trident, you tell it how big of a waste container you have and it knows when that will be full. So you have the option to check off whether it was empty or not and I do it every other time I replace a reagent because I have a one gallon jug and it does about a half a gallon every time you need to replace one of the reagents. You're gonna replace all three of them and then the next time just A and the next time all three of them, it goes in that pattern. Now on the 12th step here, as soon as you press send, it lets the Trident know that you're done and we've replaced the reagent or reagents and it's gonna get this blue logo for roughly a half hour and it's just priming the lines and getting it ready to do its next test. I replaced the reagents three days ago, so now I'm gonna calibrate. You wanna wait at least 48 hours before you calibrate. Reason being is they wanna make sure that reagent is completely in the system and you're working with the new stuff and not a mix of some of the old stuff and the new stuff. It's important you don't open this until you're ready to calibrate because as soon as you open it, it can throw the numbers a little bit off if it sits unopened for a while. And you'll be able to see, you know, if you buy a bunch, at least my experience, if you buy a bunch of packs together, they're usually pretty close with the reagents in terms of, I put the new reagents in, my levels stay pretty much the same, but when I do get a new batch where it's been like, where I didn't buy it at the same time, I have seen where like alkalinity, calcium or magnesium, is steady here, I switch it out and all of a sudden there's like a jump or a decrease and you'll see that it's just off. But right after calibrating, it normally goes back to being steady to where it was traditionally. So when you do swap it out, if you see a big change, I wouldn't be too alarmed like, oh no, what's going on? My alkalinity is going off. Give it 48 hours, recalibrate, and then you'll know, hey, what's going on here? Do I need to address something? So just be aware of that and don't freak out if it happens. And it's really, I haven't seen that much of a change. And like I said, when I buy like two or three of the two month supply or I buy a six month supply together and they're there and I'm swapping them out, they're usually pretty consistent. On this one, the only thing that happened really is my magnesium went up a little bit and it'll be interesting to see after I calibrate if it goes back down because there's no reason my magnesium should have gone up. I didn't dose any magnesium, um, but I just think it's because the reagent's just a little bit different than the last one. So you're gonna grab your tube and ideally, you know, the tube is going to be hanging down into my sump and you want it to be relatively at the same level. I know that's not always possible, but I'm going to try to put this down here, hang the tube in there, and usually my tube's at the bottom of the sump, the black tube that sucks up the water. Reason being is you just want gravity and everything to be as constant as possible so it's not like having to suck extra hard and throw something off a little bit. I wouldn't worry too much about it but the closer you can keep everything constant in terms of, you know, if you could put this in your sump exactly where it was taking and the water wouldn't go in there, that would be perfect. You, want, you know, you want everything else to be the same. 
it's about all that's really changing is the solution you're testing so you can get a good calibration. Go to your apex and then you're going to go to your tasks. Try it in calibration. It's going to give you that warning. Make sure you've waited at least 48 hours. When you go to calibrate, you want to make sure that you don't have a test coming up for the next two hours at least. You know, it says it's going to take 40 to 70 minutes to complete and it can interfere with the calibration if you have a test coming up. So if you know it's about to test at 1 o'clock and it's 12.30, don't go ahead and calibrate. Wait till after that 1 o'clock when it does its thing and then at like 1.30 calibrate so it can calibrate and then be ready for the next test. Alright, and then you're just going to enter in what the solution says so it knows how to calibrate it. This is really important because if you accidentally type in the wrong number, it can cause a lot of problems. So I always type it in, I double check. 8.1430.1260. So you can see my tubes hanging right about to where it would be in the sump. And send it to the apex and then you'll notice that this will change to blue and it's going to do its thing it takes about 40 to 70 minutes and it'll turn back to orange as soon as it's done and that's all you have to do once it's done you just put the tube back into your sump or wherever it's pulling the sample from exactly where it was and it's just ready to go to the next test you don't have to do anything else